Well, Elsie and Suki spent the entire episode together, which was fine with me. Elsie could have kept his shirt off more, but we'll go into that later. I loved how he only had toilet paper to offer Suki after she was crying about Bill. Uh, completely bachelor style, not to have a box of Kleenex laying around. And I also loved that plaid robe he was rocking. And I loved his sister. She was so cute. She was so funny. Completely channeling Adriana from The Sopranos. She was the perfect person to give Suki her wear chick makeover. The werewolf thing is like this whole biker slash um, trailer park vibe, which is exactly what Debbie was channeling. I was a little disappointed to see her. Like, Elsie could do way better than that. So now she's with Cooter. And then they have the Operation Werewolf Ceremony. That's after the King of Mississippi comes in and gives everybody blood shots. Uh, that ceremony with him switching into a werewolf and then licking her brand, that was like, there's just no words for it. And then everybody trained you into werewolves. So, because I guess everybody was so frenzied, it was sort of like, it was sort of catching, like mob mentality. So, I'm really curious to see... What happens next week? Alcy told Suki to run, so let's hope she ran in time. Every week, I think that I can't feel worse for Bill, and then the next episode comes, and I feel even worse for him. He spent this entire episode just walking around with a look on his face like, somebody put me in the sun. Not only is he trapped there with Lorena forever, he has to... Not just socialize with her and do stuff with, but it's like he now he has to be in the same room with her. It's just, uh, I can feel his skin crawling through my television. He has to call Suki up and make up this story to her about how he doesn't want to be with her anymore and what him and Lorena just did, blah, blah, blah. Now, Lorena's sitting on the bed like, like it's all true. She's basking in the afterglow. So Bill getting her out of the room the way he did was extremely satisfying. For me, unfortunately, that's not the end of his pain. He has to hang out with the King of Mississippi. I thought it was interesting how he did mention to him um, how he said he thought the Queen was behind it and it wasn't just all Eric's idea, the selling of the V. I thought that was kind of interesting. Now that the King has this information, more stuff to lord over Sophie, Sophie Ann, sorry, he wants to go celebrate. And celebration means basically murdering somebody. So it's Bill's task to go find this poor dancer for the king and Lorena and him to snack on in the limo. So Bill has to participate in that. He doesn't have a choice. I just... Oh, poor Bill. So we'll see what happens next week. Will he be able to talk to Suki? I don't know. He almost had a chance to run off, but he couldn't really run off. So we'll see what happens. All I have to say about Lafayette this week is that he is lucky that Eric did show up to save his butt. It was really stupid of him to be out there in the middle of nowhere on those guys' turf doing a deal with them. As far as Tara and Franklin, Tara and Franklin go, I have the same commentary as I did last week that he was just going to have a good time with Tara and then do what he came there to do, which was find information on Bill. But Tara is his doorway to all this information about Bill, but he still likes her. So he wants to keep her as his pet or slash toy, and at the same time, use her to get all this information about Bill. And then what did he take her to the king's house for? And then he did not correct the king's boyfriend when the king, when he said, oh, is this for me? He didn't say, no, she's with me. He just looked at Tara and told her to be quiet. So, I don't know. That guy just creeps me out. Frankly, I'm really ready for Franklin to be gone. And... I don't know. He just creeps me out. Well, Eric spent most of the episode rescuing people when he wasn't fantasizing about Suki again. So he breaks up Lafayette's little business meeting, which was quickly going south. Lafayette should have known better. Why is he meeting that guy out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night on his turf? You don't do that. You meet in a neutral location where you can get out of there just as fast as the other person. So he helps him out with that. Then he has to go and rescue Pam because the Magister, not Magistrate, it's Magister, shows up and raids Fantasia looking for V. I knew he did not believe all that crap Sophie Ann was slinging about, oh, who's selling the V? Not here. I knew he didn't. So he shows up and basically dares Eric to tell him it was Sophie Ann because he gives him this line like, oh, would you betray 
the hierarchy or whatever. Or basically throw yourself on the sword. And Eric's standing there. He doesn't know what to do. So then Pam blurts out it was Bill. I personally don't see what the big deal is. Why, how is it a betrayal for him to say what Sophie Ann is doing? Sophie Ann is betraying the entire vampire race by selling V. She's not just doing random crime stuff. She is selling out her own kind for profit. And I'm pretty sure that's high up on the list of the vampire stuff you're not supposed to do. That's why I don't understand why it's a betrayal on Eric's part to rat her out. But he goes along with what Pam says. So then the magister gives him two days to turn over Bill or Pam's going to be sunbathing. Now, I want to know what's going to happen if the King of Mississippi and the magister get together and talk about what Bill has told the king, and that is that Sophie Ann's behind it. Or what Bill's going to tell him when he sees the magistrate, if Eric drags him there, what, what Eric would probably do is try to figure out some kind of way to actually kill Bill, and like, no, if he kills Bill, there won't be anybody, right? I don't know. This is just a huge mess, and I am really interested to see what's going to happen. Jason has lost his mind. He has really lost his mind. First, he's starting stuff in the bar. It's like he's seeing his own mortality and, like, what's to become of him if he doesn't make something of himself. But he's going to blackmail Andy to become a police officer. Like, this storyline is just so ridiculous. I mean, then what is going to happen? Are they going to have, once he blackmails his way onto the police force, is he going to be the cause of somebody getting hurt or killed because he has no idea what he's doing as a police officer? Like, that's honestly the next thing I see happening. And then him realizing that this is wrong and, like, stopping it. I am, like, I was actually okay with where the storyline was going last week. But now him just strong-arming his way onto the force because, of course, Andy is going to get to be sheriff is just, I don't know. And... All those high school, the sh the sheriff's department is over here having a party, and Arlene's serving beers to all these high school students. Like, what was that about? And a little bit of Jessica this week, and a teeny tiny bit of Hoyt. Jessica has a job, because as Arlene pointed out, she is doing everything, and she's pregnant, so... He seriously did need to have somebody else in to help him. I mean, I understand why he doesn't have 15 waitresses on staff or anything, but it is, since it's such a skeleton crew, if anything happens to anybody, then <laughs> there's nobody there. So it was a good idea. Jessica needs something to do anyway. Um, and she doesn't have to be the hostess. She can just serve food. She doesn't have to serve alcohol. I mean, I know people get drinks there, but Arlene could do the drinks. Or Terry could do the drinks. Anybody, Sam could do the drinks. Somebody could do the drinks. Uh, Jessica could easily take food to the table. But she has other problems because she's recognized by this guy from her high school, who she glamours. But then Hoyt sees her, but he just kind of sees her talking to him. So I don't know if she, does he think that's her new boyfriend or whatever. No, Hoyt, it is not her new boyfriend. The outfit of the episode goes to Alcee's sister. I want, I almost called her Adriana just then. But that's who it goes to because she reminds me so much of Adriana. And I'm a Sister Sopranos. And I thought she was cute and she was really cool. I am not giving outfit of the episode to Sookie because she looked awful as like a wear chick. But Alcee's sister had a cute outfit and since there was no Pam this episode, I mean who else am I going to give it to? 